Welcome, and thank you for tuning in to this month's episode of the Cardigan Society, a society of listeners who, you guessed it, are required to wear cardigans. I'm just kidding. Um, you only need to wear your loafers or house robes. Uh, it's really whatever you want. Um, anyway, lend out your ears and listen up. It's all happening, people. Hmm. Diving right into this, our first episode, I think we should tell a bit about ourselves. Hillary, why don't you start? Okay, okay. Um, my name is Hillary. I've been at the Jackson County Public Library in Seymour, Indiana for three years uh, now this past September. Um, I just recently took over the teen position. Previously, I was in information services, and now I get to do both. Um, some odds and ends about me, I typically read uh, young adult or fiction novels. I have walked before because I've been to eight national parks in the United States and two in Canada. And I also do a scary good impression of Jennifer Coolidge. No, you are not going to hear it. <laughs> uh, what about you, Ange? All right, I'm Angie. I have worked at the Jackson County Public Library for almost five years. If you would have asked me at any point in my life what my dream job might be, I would definitely have said librarian. I have so much fun doing this and being a bit of a nerd, I guess. Uh, power just, to the nerds. Yeah, power to the nerds. Um, I just feel like this <laughs> kismet or whatever. <laughs> meant to be. Meant yeah, to be kind of sure. thing. Um, working in the library has really been the best thing that's ever happened to me. It's the perfect platform to make use of my skills and abilities and it gives me so much in return, so much more than a paycheck. Um, my reading habits fall into mostly non-fiction, history-related things. I am the uh, local history genealogy, genealogy buff, buff in, the, in our department, so I feel like uh, I try to read as much as I can about things that are pertinent, not, you know, not just to my job, but things that I actually find interesting. I, I really do think I was well-suited for this. Yeah. Um, hmm. Something we something peculiar or weird about me? Uh, uh anything. Just, just choose anything. <laughs> All of the above. All of the above. Um, some of the kids have said you don't act like the librarian. Uh, but then again, what does a, a modern librarian act like? Yeah. Uh, you tell me. I have cardigans and glasses. And my hair can go into a bun, and that's about <laughs> it. I have contacts. We drink a lot of coffee and tea, and we can't turn down a donut to save our lives. <laughs> so, um, let's see. Do-do-do. Carbs and library cards. Oh, yeah, yeah. That's where it's at. So, um, do you, whose book do you want to start with? Oh, we probably want to state that for this first episode, we are, we're, we picked a theme, we picked a, a subject area, and... Following the end of the horrible 2020 episode, we decided to do dystopian fiction. Um, Hillary, you want to tell us about your book? And uh, Mine's not super dystopian, mainly because I have such a hard time getting into dystopian. Um, I think it's just uh, too far out there for me. I don't, I don't know. Uh, but this is like kind of a, a very strange novel in itself. It, it's categorized as fiction but I don't it's its own entity to me I've never read anything like it um this book was originally released as a podcast and is something that you can still go listen to online for free and I've never I've never had a book that I've read that was originally a podcast and then they turned it into a book uh but this book is Alice Isn't Dead by Joseph Fink um there's a whole like cult following behind this book and podcast, which is amazing. Um, I, I personally haven't listened to the podcast in full. I started to uh, a little bit after I read some, um, but I've read enough to know that reviewers like to listen to the podcast first and then read the book. And you had never listened to the podcast beforehand? No, no. I listened to it a little bit after. And the person who, uh, who reads this, via the podcast. Amazing. I love her voice, her like actions, the little sounds they put in. It's everything. Mm. Um, I don't like usually audiobooks 
usually I have to have the physical copy, but that's really immersive and I really like it. Um, highly recommend. Probably will listen to One after this. One of the most amazing things about um, technology and everything that we have today is that you could take some innocuous subject matter or someone just sitting in their living room and they can produce something yeah amazing a whole a whole new entity oh Uh, yeah i have an Um, idea for for you know cupcakes on a tuesday and it's going to be a baking show boom it happens you you know anything's possible um, one of my favorite bloggers has always been samantha irby yeah and um She's gone on to write several books that are witty and thoughtful and hilarious and uncomfortable. (laughs) And I love that about that kind of platform because, you know, you start off just ranting. Yeah. And it's just all in in your thoughts. And then it becomes something something bigger. To come out of a podcast, I've been listening to some podcasts that are like scary story related yeah and this kind of goes it toes that line of of scary um it it follows a girl named keisha uh, a woman who is searching for her presumed dead wife alice so alice has simply vanished um there's no even uh not even really any real evidence to prove that alice is dead but she's been gone long enough that she's just thought to be deceased at this point um Nobody seems to know where she is, what happened, nothing. Um, So right away uh, from the get-go of this book, the reader is told that this is not meant to be thought of as a story whatsoever, but rather a road trip. (laughs) Because because Keisha has taken up long-haul truck driving in order to drive across the country in search of Alice. Why? (laughs) Because Alice seems to be showing up in the background of news reports all over America. How familiar does this sound? Like the babushka on the grassy knoll. <laughs> like, do you know how popular this whole conspiracy is of, of people who are, you know, doppelgangers or have, like, found the proverbial Time fountain of youth? Yes. And things like that. Have you seen the, um, what is it, the, the news report with uh, the man who looks like Abraham Lincoln? Mm-hmm. Oh, my gosh. Uncanny. <laughs> like, All those the historical photos of people that look so much like celebrities. Yes, you know, like, uh, reincarnations, doppelgangers, yeah. twins, what, Who's what that have guy you. Who's that looks like Matthew McConaughey? Uh, oh my <laughs> gosh. Uh, well, I guess there can only be so many, um, you know, genes in the, in the gene lottery where people start to all blend into mush and look hey, the same. Until I don't a know. unicorn horn becomes... <laughs> you know, a regular occurrence in the labor and delivery department of the hospital, then, you know, we basically have eyes, nose, and mouth. We yeah, uh, yeah we just all blend. That so much. <laughs> so. And thank goodness. <laughs> well, I like uh. that. That's, a, that's an interesting uh, lead-in to a book because you've got something to go on, and then you can go back and look yeah, for things that you've Yeah, she's a long-haul truck driver. So. How amazing is that? Um, and then she, of course, stumbles into... Like a a story of of like lost American history and crimes, and she stumbles across a serial killer who marks her as his next victim, like just straight up looks her in the eye, takes a chunk out of a guy's neck, kind of deal. Like it's that's creepy, intense. scary. It's <laughs> it's amazing. Um, and for the podcast, I noticed in the episode that I did listen to, um, they do give trigger warnings, which I love, but. It's amazing, and you're definitely going to need them. (laughs) Um, And, of course, the whole time that Keisha's out looking for Alice, long-haul truck driving, she has this, like, inner monologue that's happening, and she's paranoid now because there's a serial killer that she feels like is everywhere, which I think we all would if we saw that happen. Um, (laughs) But meanwhile, Alice keeps popping up in different places. So she just, she has these places marked on the map, and then she just keeps skipping around. Time travel, maybe. Reincarnation, maybe. Mm. We don't know what's happening. There's a lot going on there. Yes. Will the serial killer catch Keisha before she can find Alice? We don't know. Uh, The book preys on irrational little fears and uses them to build a compelling tale of good versus evil. Um, Yeah, and I was anxious and hopeful the entire time, which is amazing. And I would give this an 8 out of 10 for the the thrill of it alone. Um, Yeah. 
I might listen to the podcast in full later and do a full comparison because it's worth it. I'm adding this to my book club's read for the year. It's huh. it's just good. It really? I'm in. Huh. What'd you read? Yeah, um, Anything good? You know, I'm not a dystopian fiction no. reader either. It's I mean, so hard it, to get into. I'm not a fiction reader per se. I do like the idea of incorporating, you know, who pits the fan sort of scenarios into something that people read. Because a lot of people don't want to read educational materials. Right. But if your book sort of incorporates it's gotta have some, some kind skills of thrill. and things like that, along with a little excitement, then that, that's all good. Um, I chose Hazards of Time Travel by Joyce Carol Oates. Um, I picked it based solely on the author's name. I had read her in one of my college English classes. Classic, yeah. I like her style of writing. She's a little bit on the dark side. Um, right up your alley. But yeah, she's not overly descriptive. And she kind of gets to the point, but she makes it the trip interesting no chunks out no. of people's necks um no no <laughs> i didn't i did not see or experience any violence in this book uh there is the more of a psychological maybe it's a lot of psychological things nice and there's a lot of allusion to the violence that could happen okay but uh, some things have happened to our main character here that, you know, they're they're rough, obviously. Yeah. What we're doing is we are living in a much different time, post 9-11. Um, the U.S., you, the United States has become a different entity. It's no longer a democratic republic. It's definitely sort of an oligarchy situation. Oh, yeah. Lots of 1984-ish you know, pulling people off the street KGB style and torturing them and everyone's a, everyone's guilty, the whole deal. It's it, reading and writing materials kind of the same way as Fahrenheit 451 and there's a little 1984 in there. Okay, there's lots, okay. lots of stuff going on. Um, I like that the... Uh, the protagonist in the book is a young teenage female, even though this is not a YA classified book. She doesn't stray too far from the dystopian ideology, but adding in the time travel aspect makes it very interesting yeah. because what happens is, spoiler alert, all the baddies, supposedly, get sent to a different time rather than to... So everyone that's quote-unquote evil... Or treasonous, or whatever. They're they're being shipped around, and they the, their families aren't being told. They don't know where they're going. They don't know when they're going. There's just a lot. Just going like a on. blip in time, and they're yeah. gone. That's freaky. There's not a lot of resolution, but in the end, I believe that the the main character does end up better off than she was before. So there's kind of a happy ending there. Yeah. But um, the middle part is where you're going to find out where all of the bad stuff happens. It's it's just an interesting col you know collection of scenarios and you know what ifs and might happens. I I can't say I enjoyed it greatly. I okay. mean, it's not okay. just because it's not my thing. Yeah. But definitely an yeah, intrigue. I read the Time Traveler's Wife. That was good. Um, I read a really? lot of things. Yeah. I, you like that over this though. No. Okay, yeah. I was going to say... I'm also I've been, not into romance. I was so. going to say I'm not a huge romance buff no, myself. But. No, but that, that whole thing. I mean, I've read the... I've read a lot of time travel kind of books, I guess. You know, Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy has a lot of science fiction and stuff. Right. When you have science fiction things in your... You know, there's a little more appeal to it for me. So... Yeah, it was it was great. It was okay. I do love Joyce Carol Oates' writing style. Yeah. Um, this would not have been a hand-picked... Your first choice. My first choice for something. I've read a lot of her short stories. Yeah. Um, out of all of the Oates options, out of all the oatmeals, you would not pick this All the oatmeals. I mean, this, this wouldn't have been my first choice, but it was, it was a good book. It was okay. a good book. I think that it could easily become a... 
a Netflix, a Netflix original okay. or something okay. like that, you know. Could have its own little short, uh, short series, one season yeah. maybe. I think it's pretty cool, you know. So like out of 10, what, out what of would 10. that be? Ooh. Yeah. Seven or eight-ish. Okay, okay, 7.5. So, 7.5 cardigans out of 10. 7.5 cardigans out of 10. For hazards of time travel. Joyce Carol Oates. Okay, what about you on the cardigans? I'm a I'm a eight out of ten cardigans for Alice Isn't Dead. Mm. Joseph Fink. Yeah. Not mm. not bad for the old Finkster. Not Finkster. <laughs> yeah, um, I guess he's got this whole uh, this whole like society built up around. It's a welcome to the night veil. Is the is the premise of it? Uh, but there's like several different different books and stuff that are about things that happen within this realm. So it's kind of time travel-esque, but uh, it definitely it definitely toes a couple of lines here. It's amazing. Well, we, um, since this is our first episode and we're not real familiar with the territory of podcasting and whatnot, you know, we're trying to keep this loose or whatever. Um, I have, however, been doing a little bit of research. Um, what you got for me? Well, I was poking around about podcasting and whatnot, and I come across just a couple of Reddit posts Oh, that um, were quotes that I thought was... Read that Reddit. Read that Reddit. Uh, it is impossible to prove that a book is good. I mean, for real, though, because you're just going off reviews, and what's good to you. Right. So, I, you, know, you know... Some of those things, like the this one Redditor, J sub-LA, he... Uh, he doesn't take a hard line on any of this book reviewing stuff. I mean, he yeah. just puts it out there and, you know, lets people assess for themselves. It is. It's more like a, a line drawn in the sand. You can just, you know, keep pushing that line. Yeah. Another another thing he said uh, in one of the podcast reading Reddit da 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 das is that a good book makes me want to write about it or, in our case, talk about it. So, yeah. props, shout out. Yeah, it's like anything else. Uh, once you get into it, and it's amazing, you can't shut up about it. It's all you talk about, and then your family starts, you know, rolling their eyes at you every time you bring it up. Yeah. Mom, mm. it's 10 out of 10 cardigans. 10 Work out with 10. me. Work with me. So, if we happen to get any listeners to this or create any sort of, you know, fan base or whatever from it, we are super, super interested especially during these times and hearing from people and discussing with you. I mean, this isn't a book club. This is a club for readers. That's something. That's different. right. So, That's right. You know, give us a list of your top 10 top things that 10. you look for to evaluate a book. I um, want to know what was your favorite thing to read in 2020? Oh, that's a good idea. Did anything spark hope? <laughs> right. Other than the labels on your hand sanitizer. <laughs> so, 98% alcohol. Yeah. Woohoo! Yeah. <laughs> I think it would be interesting if we had sort of a, uh, on our 1 to 10 cardigan scale and also, so, you know, some sub categories, things like enjoyment, understanding, writing style, and aesthetic. Um, how did you feel about the period chosen for the book that you were reading? Uh, was there a feeling? Because writing, more importantly than anything, other than informing people, it's to provoke some sort of emotion. Right, like any other kind of art. Yeah, yeah. poetry, art, anything. So, Well, um, and I want to know, would you read another book by that same author? Because that tells me everything I need to know right there. Um, absolutely, yes, because I came back to this not knowing where I was going to, you know, land with it because I hadn't really chosen this John Amber book. She, because I knew she wrote kind of darkly, Yeah. I had already had an appreciation for her, and I do like her writing style. It's okay. not overstuffy. It's, it's, it's just... Something you could read any time of day. Yeah. 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 Any season? Yeah. Nice. I can read this with the TV on and with a cup of coffee and, and coffee and yep, yeah, that's what we're looking for here. Cozy cardigan and coffee. Yeah. <laughs> so, that's kind of read. All right. I have a question for you. Okay. Um, I have found a quiz here. 
that shall not be named. Um, and I'm going to ask you to pick your favorite 2020 TV show or movie uh, based out of this selection here. And I'm going to give you your resolution for 2021. Okay. Okay, so out of these, which is your favorite? Outer Banks, Never Have I Ever, Julie and the Phantoms, Side Hustle, High School Musical, The Whole Series, To All the Boys I've Loved Before, slash P.S. I Love You, The Kissing Booth 2, or Enola Holmes. I actually haven't seen any of that. <laughs> oh my gosh. Oh yeah, really. Okay, I'm going to pick one for you then. I think you would really like Enola Holmes. That's um, Sherlock's sister, right? Yes. Right? Yes. Um, okay, so your new resolution is uh, try a new workout. That's your whole task for 2021. That's that's all I got to do? That's great. <laughs> well, that's all I got to do. You have the whole year. It's some leg lifts and crunches, and I, uh, yeah, I'll see you next year, guys. Okay. Wow. Yeah, no, I'd have to I'd have to say the same. And Ola Holmes was where it was at. So I will be trying that workout with you. I um, love huh. <laughs> television. I've watched a good bit more television than I usually do. Um, I Well, yeah, we've been so pushed up. I have watched probably 100 episodes of South Park. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. I've watched, um, I think, four or five animes in completion now. So I just keep adding to my repertoire of anime shows. If you have any suggestions, please leave them in the comments. The Vision of Escaflone. Really? My absolute favorite. Vampire Hunter D. These are all older, yeah, sort yeah, of yeah. old school. And I, The Vision of Escaflone is probably my favorite. I've got an unpopular opinion for you. Cowboy Bebop. Love it. I really tried. I really tried. I don't. I don't know it what has it a is. Corgi. How could I not love it? <laughs> I, I tried so hard. Everyone I have talked to about anime is like Cowboy Bebop. Well, Cowboy Bebop. I feel I, the same way about Bleach. Oh, ooh, we are digressing. That's the tea from our subject matter. So, yep. Let's see what else we got for him. Um, <sighs> events coming in in February and March for uh, for the library. Got any new news? Mm, new news. Well, don't you have a book club called I Book do. It? I do. Book It Book Club. That's a Facebook event group. Um, it's made for those 16 and up on Facebook. Uh, they meet every fourth Tuesday of every month, um, completely online, to discuss the book of the month. It's usually a fictional or young adult novel. Um, we also share some health tips, recipes, what have you. Great for the new year. Thank you very much. Um, yeah, let's hear about some other clubs we got going here. All right. Um, we have had a long-running and very popular Tuesday night book club yes. that will be meeting in February and March at 7 p.m. via Zoom. It was hosted at a restaurant in town, but we'll see what so comes. We'll see what yeah. happens. So. Yeah, definitely more. Definitely check up on that. Uh, see what's happening on our. On our website there uh, we also have uh, spilling ink uh, which for now is virtual again check the website for updates there um, spilling ink will be held on the 13th of both february and march uh, where they will discuss um, how to enter a writing contest uh, what that could mean for you when big and um, how to write a how-to article enough hows mm. to to build a whole one if you haven't yet, make sure you like the Jackson County Library Facebook page and all of our other social media outlets on Twitter and Instagram. March 8th at 6 p.m., you can tune in to hear author James Madison discuss his book, The Ku Klux Klan in the Heartland. That sounds like a pretty intense Yeah, and that's going to be on our Facebook page. Yeah. Um, so yeah, be sure to so, tune in for that. Um, any and all information about the library and its programming can be found on our Facebook page or on our Jackson County Public Library website at www.myjclibrary.org. Keep checking in. Um, since it is uh, December when we're recording this in January when you hear it, Obviously, we can't say with certainty uh, what this year will bring, but we do hope to see you soon. And uh, until then, uh, do keep an eye out for those virtual programs as they come. 
Well, that about wraps up our very first podcast episode. Yes. Hopefully we'll get some people tuned in here and uh, great. Yeah, get we'll your cardigans, s- man. We'll see you next time. We're uh, going to be book nerding all over the place. Get your cardigans on. Yep. Let's get weird. Yep. Tune in. Zone out. Books are so lit, man. <laughs> That's a really bad literary pun. I know. And I'm here for it. And I just want you to know. Um, you it know, just sounds weird coming out of my mouth. <laughs> I'm not going to be booked next year, but I'll, you know, dog ear that. We can come back to it later. You know, dog earring is a, a big sin. Fat, no, no, that's a cardinal sin in the book world. A cardigan sin. A cardigan, a cardigan sin. 